Hello, my name is Fabian Strube, and today I want to give you an overview over my droplet solver HDR. So, um, if you plug it in by default, it looks something like this. You got two types of drops, the static ones and the dynamic ones. I built the HDR that you have four tabs. First is the density, where your drops are. Second is the drops, how they look, how they shape. Third is the movement, and fourth is the output. Um, so let's start by looking at the density tab. You have three scatter methods to choose from. First is the scatter node. Second, a paint scatter, where you can paint a density map onto your mesh and scatter the points only where the density is one. And third, there is a custom scatter, and you can plug in your own scatter node into the second input, and we'll read this. So let's choose chat scatter for now. You can choose the number of drops, uh, and also say you want to add drops per frame. Let's put this to five and see what happens. You can see that it's adding points onto the mesh. This is, ex for example, great if you have a rain setup and there are more drops coming onto it. Um, there is also a dynamic ratio. Like I said, the droplets have two states, a static state and a dynamic state. If it's set to 0.1, which means 10% of the drops are dynamic. If I set it to 0.5, means 50% of the drops will be dynamic. The last one is a global seed. Um, let's go to the drops tab and, for example, adjust the shape of the drop. So, which is quite important for how it's shading is the height. You can set the height of the drops and also a minimum size and a maximum size. Then there is the tray length. If you play it, you can see that this trail is really long. You can just lower the value here and it's getting shorter. So then you maybe want to shape the trail the way you like it. And this is where this ramp ramp comes in. So if you can see that this should be the trail and you can shape it the way you like. The third tab is the movement tab. Uh, here you can set the speed of the droplets. Let's put this to 0 0.2, which make them slower. We can also set the minimum speed and maximum speed. And if we want, we can add a little bit of an organic wiggle to the trail. Then, if we don't want them to go down in the y-axis very straight, we can add a little jitter to make them move around a bit more and make them feel a bit more natural. Then there is the surface friction. Zero equals uh, full stops and one no stops. So when they are going down the surface, it will, there is a noise which says um, if you should stop from time to time or you should just go straight down. So if we put this to one, you can see that the trails are not, not stopping at all. But if you put this to zero, you can see that they will come to full stops eventually. Then there is a surface offset and wind direction. For example, let's put this to 1 in Z, and you can see that the drops are going into the Z direction. The fourth tab is the output tab, where you can set the output type. Maybe you saw already that um, for now is, is more like a preview. This is a, a curve with points, and there are, let me show you this output, and they have a P scale, and there are instances, instance spheres copied to it. So by to make it more, more like a mesh, for example, here they are colliding, you can just set this to a polygon mesh. If you set it to polygon mesh, they will automatically combine the ones which are close to each other, since it's converting them to a VDB volume and then back to a polygon mesh. To make it a little bit more dynamic and not these round shapes, you can also add a world noise onto your polygon mesh. I will recommend you to just set up everything up with the instance spheres, since it's way faster, and then if you are satisfied with the result, just switch it to polygon mesh. Let's talk about merging. As you can see, we got quite a few droplets on here, and if you press play, you can see that all these a few drops are disappearing if larger ones are colliding with them. How this works is each frame they're checking for a specific distance. The distance is the p scale of the drop, and searching for a point in this radius. If they find a point, they will check whether the, this point or this point is bigger, and then it will merge them. It doesn't always work perfectly, but it works perfect enough for a car window from a distance, and you want to create these smear smear effects. So I just want to mention that this is not a dynamic setup with flips or anything. This is a procedural setup meant to, to work fast and iterate fast. And um, it, I think it works for most cases. And I added quite a few options just to make it uh, as organic and natural as possible. But from here on, if you want to have a close-up, for example, you should maybe go for a flip method or uh, something like this. But I think for most cases, this should work and give you a quite okay result. So let's talk about the outputs for a second. Um, you have three outputs, the droplets, the points, and the wet map. Uh, the wet map looks something like this. 
you can use this later in shading for, uh, for example, coating or the roughness map. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed. It's now available on Gumroad. Goodbye.